Okay, as promised, network address translation part two. So without further ado, let's get into some crunchy goodness here. So remember that we were talking about NAT, which is specified in RFC 3022. And it is an address management tool. Lots of folks call it a security tool. It is not. It's kind of a side benefit sometimes. And the whole point is that it hides an internal network from the outside world. And it does that by translating addresses and we're working our way through um, some of the background and then into an example so that's kind of the deal here and then all of the traffic from the inside network actually looks like it came from the outside interface on a NAT machine so that's what's going on here and the NAT machine is usually a router so last time we talked a little bit about private addressing just as a reminder these are the RFC 1918 address allocations for use with private networks and private networks are used with NAT. So we got the 10 NAT, the 172 and the 192 addresses. So I just stuck this slide in here to remind you where we came from. All right, so and again a little little review here. The outside interface has to have a global presence. Now in our example later on, we're going to show you that that's not exactly the case. The important thing here is that you've got a private network on the inside and then the addresses are changing to an address on the outside of your router. Now it's typically, as we do in most uh, small office, home office networks, the typically the outside interface of the router has a globally unique public address, but you can run a NAT machine behind a NAT machine, behind a NAT machine, behind a NAT machine, if you really want to. And remember that the minute you're private addressing, those are not going to appear in the public DNS. All right, so the one of the other pieces to this is that we ought to remind ourselves how most connections work. Most connections are in this sort of client-server model. Now, if you want more on the client-server model and, and TCP and UDP in particular, uh, you know, go do a little reading in the packet guide or go look at the videos that I did elsewhere um, on this channel. But essentially... When you spin up a connection to a web server or your email server, you're starting from your IP address and you're going to a destination IP address. And to differentiate applications, we have TCP and UDP based connections and those TCP and UDP connections at layer 4 also have ports associated with them. So what I like to say is that a socket is uniquely identified by those four numbers, source and destination IP, source and destination port, and of course we differentiate TCP and UDP as well. And so that sort of const uh, constitutes our connection in a client-server based communication. So that becomes really important. And the reason we're doing it now is because that's the basis upon which NAT works. So here's an example of a TCP uh, client-server connection. So I cut out the packets in the middle, but all I really did was establish a connection to a web server and then terminate that connection. That's really all I did. So at the beginning of this, uh, you can see the sin, sin, ack, ack connection. That's packets 2, 3, and 4. And we can see that we, get, we have a, two different IP addresses and two different ports here. And then there's a little data. So on packet number 5, you can see there's an HTTP GET here. And then all the way to the bottom, we can see that the two sides agree to close down the connection with the uh, the fin messages there. So that's basic TCP, right? Source and destination IP, source and destination port, uh, startup handshake, and then closing handshake and data in between. Now there's a lot more to it, but that's not what this is about. So if we remember that that's how we set up TCP and UDP connections, although I guess now that I've said that I should say that UDP connections don't have handshakes, we remember that we've got those four numbers and we're specifying, in this case, TCP. So what we're going to pay attention to when we start running network address translation is those four numbers there, the source and destination IP and the source and destination port. Okay, and I'll do a little, little preface here in saying that when we run across a NAT box, what's going to happen is we're going to modify these four numbers. We're going to change them to make them appear as though this transmission came from somebody else. So that's sort of our review 
of the numbers used in a connection. So for a couple of the examples that, that I have coming up uh, in the next set of videos, this is, you know, an example topology. So in this particular case, the 192 network is the inside private network, and then I'm passing through, yes, another private network, uh, another NATed connection. But for the purposes of that router right there running NAT, we got 192 on the inside and the 10 NAT on the outside. And then this is going out to uh, one of the root name servers, 8.8.8.8. .8 okay, so that's kind of what our topology looks like. And so for our purposes, because I ran this inside of a lab, we actually have two private addresses, but that's really immaterial at this point. Just remember that we've got the 192 address on the inside. So what we're working up to is that if I start this uh, capture going, and in this case I'm, I'm running some ICMP traffic, and I'll talk a little bit more about ICMP at a later time, but um, or at least ICMP as it runs through a NAT box, we can see that in this case we've got the 192 168.5.1 going to that address on the destination. And that's a capture on the inside private network. But on the outside, this transmission appears to have come from a different address. And no, it's not a different transmission. It's the exact same one. And so the, the point that we're trying to make here is that as you go through this, right, we're actually changing the addresses on the inside network to look as though they came from somebody else by sending them through the NAT box. So I just wanted to do this particular video so that we reminded ourselves that really what we're doing here is dealing with client-server connections, source and destination IP, source and destination ports, and then we're going to manipulate the values that we see here. And then we're going to keep track of that so that when the transmissions come back, uh, we can retranslate them to the original IP addresses. So on the inside, we got 5.1. On the outside, we have 100.100. .100. And when they come back to that 100.100 .100 address, we retranslate them back to 5.1. Well, thanks very much for watching this particular little video. I hope it helped remind you of the client-server connections. Next up, we're going to do NAT Part 3, and we're, we'll actually do the config lines and a little more exploration into to what's happening as it goes through the router. We'll look at some translation tables and like that. Okay, so if you want to do addressing, that was Part 1. Uh, this is client server, and then we'll do examples next time. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening, and may your packets always reach their destinations.